Black Mirror Season 4's premiere episode is an in-your-face Star Trek homage, but with a twist. Unlike most of today's endless reboots, remakes, and references, USS Callister isn't here to appeal to our nostalgia. Instead, it's a scathing takedown of the toxic fanboy. It creates a nightmare version of toxic fandom in the character of Robert Daly. The CTO of the Callister company, he's underappreciated and unable to assert himself in his real life. So he leads a secret virtual life inside a game version that he's made of his favorite TV show, Space Fleet. The private virtual world reveals his real self, a cruel, petty person who bitterly wants other people's respect and is determined to punish them for not treating him like the god he thinks he truly is. You're not just disgraceful, you're disgusting, all of you. Before we go on, be sure to hit subscribe and click the bell to get notifications on all of our new videos. We open with a space fleet sequence in the bright camp spirit of the original Star Trek series. Daly is doing a riff on Shatner's very dramatic acting style. Mr. Scott, ready to beam up. Good Captain. Transport us aboard. Yes, Captain. Everyone applauds the captain for being decisive, and Daly kisses the women on board in a clever shout out to one of the first interracial kisses on TV, as well as Kirk's iconic kiss with a green skinned alien. This opening plays on the original Star Trek's feeling of optimism, of looking forward boldly to a progressive future. But of course, this is a black mirror, and it's not really interested in revisiting whatever Star Trek was or wasn't about. It's interested in what's driving Robert Daly's all consuming obsession obsession with the show and how harmful this obsession really is. It turns out Daly's fandom is all about possessiveness. As we know, fans can be incredibly possessive about the shows, movies, and franchises they love. It's not uncommon for a Star Wars fan to argue with George Lucas himself, because these stories have taken on a life of their own. They don't belong to the original author anymore. These days, it seems they belong to the most passionate fans, some of whom model themselves as gatekeepers. But Daly's not just possessive about Space Fleet, he uses his Space Fleet fantasy world as a way to possess and hurt the people he can't in real life by stealing their DNA to make sentient digital copies that he can torture. USS Callister is such an effective episode because it's a really interesting reversal of the story we're expecting to see when we start watching. As viewers, we begin by identifying with Robert because we're following him. And as we said in our previous Black Mirror video, point of view is strikingly effective at making us immediately side with someone. Although in Black Mirror, we should be ready not to trust our main character. But we also identify with Robert because without realizing it, we're waiting for that fanboy revenge of the nerds narrative we've gotten so familiar with in recent years. That nerd saw me naked! We get the whole setup. Nice repressed guy meets cute younger girl who finally sees the real him. So next we're expecting to see the nerd coming into his own, fighting back against the sleazy bro-y CEO James Walton who's taking credit for his work and getting the new girl Nanette as his prize. Are all nerds as good as you? As The Telegraph wrote, it's not just Daly who's creating a sexist fantasy, half of Hollywood is. But pretty soon after setting it up, the story abandons this narrative. The bad guy Walton turns into an overpunished victim. But you threw my son out of an airlock, so. Nanette becomes the protagonist. We are gonna get that lollipop. And Robert is the villain. In our second visit to his Space Fleet game, we see that he can be a bit of a bully. His team seems afraid of him. Something's a little off. Vanilla latte. Skim milk at once. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, what do you want? Just vanilla latte. Skim milk. But when the copy of Nanette is brought into his virtual world, then we learn his real agenda. To torture anybody he feels has disrespected him. Most of the wrongs that Daly is avenging are laughably petty. I called him out for staring. I reset admin permissions on a test build for 14 minutes. Insufficient smiling. I brought him the wrong sandwich. Nanette Sin is saying that her admiration for Daly is, gasp, not sexual, but professional. Do you have a thing for him? Daly, no, no. It's not like that. It's, it's purely, it's professional. 
This detail is so significant because Daly is clearly driven by the lack of respect he gets. But Nanette didn't disrespect him. She's shown him huge respect and admiration. It's just for his work rather than expressed as wanting to sleep with him. Well, just fangirling, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> There's a weird cultural assumption we tend to make that if a woman thinks highly of a man, she must want to sleep with him. And that if she doesn't, it's somehow an insult to him. And that's exactly what we see going on in this episode. Meanwhile, we can't help but notice the sexlessness of Robert's space fleet adds another layer of messed up. He's left sex out of his virtual world completely, which indicates that Daly doesn't know how to approach sexual relationships in an appropriate, mature way. And as a result of his immaturity, this seeming nice guy has developed some very harmful resentments and false assumptions about women. So it becomes clear that the point of this story isn't going to be Robert learning to mature and assert himself and get that respect that he deserves. The point is that if this guy is really so toxic and small-minded that given the freedom to imagine any possible virtual reality, he comes up with this sick torture chamber, then we need to turn our backs on him. Just as Daly is left to die, and his avatar presumably remains trapped forever alone in that disconnected virtual reality. The show's writing is declaring that we should no longer stand for the subtle automatic sexism of the nice guy fantasies that have been regurgitated to us. To this end, it critiques Space Fleet's underlying sexism. Mini skirted damsels. <laughs> A little cold for that in space. And racism. Weird blue alien skin, I know it's f***ed up. Almost sort of racist. In the end, Nanette and the crew pass through the wormhole slash update and end up in a ship that looks a lot like J.J. Abrams' rebooted Star Trek. They're in a modern story where the women don't have to wear miniskirts and Nanette is the captain. But on the downside, they're on the internet, interacting with gamers, as encapsulated by Aaron Paul's voice cameo. So are we gonna blow each other or are we gonna trade? The internet is a wide frontier full of possibilities, but somehow it doesn't inspire the bright-eyed high hopes of Gene Roddenberry's future space travel. It's littered with people expressing the worst parts of themselves, saying things they would never actually dare to in real life like Daly using an anonymous space to lash out and avenge both real and imagined flights without repercussion. And that's when they're not looking for porn. But if the digital world really is that new great frontier, then this Black Mirror episode raises an important point. We need to put some more thought into how we act online. We should create a more respectful, hopeful digital world, especially if some versions of ourselves could go on to live long, potentially endless lives there. King of space right here. King of space. Thanks for watching, and if you like our videos, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just click this link here. We spend a lot of time making these videos, and every little bit helps. And of course, the very best thing you can do is subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our latest videos.